Have you ever noticed how boring a lot of functions are? For example, the function f of x equals 1. Very boring. A straight line. Now, we could probably make it a little bit more exciting by adding x to it. So our function is f of x equals 1 plus x. That's still kind of boring. It's just a straight line. At least it's got a little bit of variation to it. You know, it doesn't just stay 1. At some places, it's 2. We could make this function a little more interesting by subtracting x squared from it. Well, now we're getting somewhere. You know, we could make it even more interesting by adding to that 1 half x cubed. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Did you know that you can create a function just by adding up terms like that that looks a lot like sine of x. Or, you don't have to add too many terms to describe what happens to someone if they're shot out of a cannonball. You might not be able to describe what happens when they hit the ground, but you can describe how high they are when just by having three terms. So we really like functions where we just start adding up terms. And these functions are known as polynomials. In particular, a polynomial is a sum of powers multiplied by constants. So we write this as f of x equals a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 and so on and so forth. We keep decreasing n to get a 2 x squared plus a 1 x plus a 0. Now all of these a n's, a 1, a 2, all the way on up to a n, I can write as a i. And these are all constants, like 2, or minus 3.14. Now the big trick here is that x is only to a power in each term, such as x to the n, or x, or it doesn't appear in a term, like this a0 term. You will never see sine of x, or log of x, or anything that is not x to some power. The largest power in this equation, x to the n, defines the order of this polynomial. In this case, the polynomial is an nth order polynomial. If you have a polynomial like f of x equals x to the 34 plus 2, you have a 34th order polynomial. So what do you do with polynomials? Well, the most common polynomials that you will see are quadratics. And these can do things like describe what happens to the height of a person as they're shot out of a cannonball. We write these as f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, quadratics are really cool, not only because of what they describe, but also because, well, we know how to solve them. For example, if you have 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you can solve, given some constants, a, b, and c, for x. And to do this, you use the quadratic formula. The other really cool thing about quadratic polynomials is that we can factor them, usually pretty easily. So when we say we're going to factor them, we're going to take the whole, so the entire equation, f of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. And we're going to find two things that multiply together to make that whole. So for example, 2 x squared plus 7 x plus 3 can be written as 2 x plus 1 times x plus 3. We have factored 2 x squared plus 7 x plus 3 into two things that can be multiplied together specifically 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. So when we factor a polynomial, specifically a quadratic, we're going to look for things that we can multiply together to make that quadratic. Specifically, we're going to look for things that have the form some number times x plus some other number. We're going to see how many of these we have to multiply together to make our polynomial. So let's take a look at an example. Let's factor x squared plus 4x minus 12. And the first part that I'm going to factor is this number that goes in front of the x. To find the number that goes in front of the x, I'm going to look at the x squared term. 
Now the x squared term is just 1x squared. So 1 can be factored as 1 times 1. That's our only option. So each one of these 1's is going to go in front of the x in each of our two terms. To get the second number in our terms, we're going to look at the constant in our quadratic. This minus 12 can be factored as minus 12 times 1, minus 1 times 12, minus 2 times 6, minus 6 times 2, minus 3 times 4, and minus 4 times 3. So any one of these combinations could go in for the second number in each of these terms. So which one is it? Well, to determine which one it is, we look at the middle term in our quadratic, this 4x. Now 4x has to be the sum of our two numbers. So if we add these two together, 1 and minus 12, we get minus 11. 12 minus 1 is 11, and so on and so forth. Now sure enough, one of these numbers is what we need, which is 4. So we know that the two constants that are in our two terms are minus 2 and 6. So I can rewrite this as x minus 2 times x plus 6. Now let's go ahead and check. x minus 2 times x plus 6 is x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12, which is x squared plus 4x minus 12. So the tricks to factoring quadratics. Use a in front of your x squared to determine the coefficients of your factored terms. You're going to use c to determine the options for your constants. And you're going to use b to determine which of those options to use. Now obviously it can get very complicated very quickly. So you should remember that not everything can be factored. And factoring takes a lot of practice. So to review, polynomials can be used to describe almost anything. But quadratics are our favorite types of functions because we can factor them and we can solve them using the quadratic equation.